Welcome to the transmission for Sunday, the 14th of January in Gene Key 61. So we're in the last day or two of Gene Key 61. And that is the shadow of psychosis and the city of sanctity. And then the pathway from that shadow to the city is the pathway of inspiration. And it's not inspiration like, oh, I'm so inspired to go to the gym today. <laughs> that's great, but that's not what we mean here. So let's dig in a little bit and discover the pathway that this gene key opens up for us to enter the mind of God. And I love that because who doesn't want to be an embodiment of the mind of God? I mean, we may, we may all think we are, which is the psychosis of the shadow, but truly there's a place and I say place, but it's not a place and it's not a state. There's an experience of the divine that we can have, which is really an experience of our true self. You know, at that point, we're just, we're just like pointing. We're not even able to wrap our arms around the mystery. We're just pointing to it. And at some point when, you know, as Kierkegaard says, you, you, you ride the camel or the horse to the temple door. And so it's like your spiritual practice. You, you do these things, you study these things, you learn distinctions, you learn Kabbalah, you learn the Enneagram, you learn all the distinctions and then at some point you get off the horse and you walk through the temple door. And that's what each one of us has to do. So really what Jinky 61 says is if you think you know, you don't know. You cannot enter the holy of holies, the mind of God with this human egoic knowing. And yet as spiritual women on the path, I got to tell you, that it's okay to know things. <laughs> it's okay to put a stake in the ground. It's okay to claim what you know. So as all the jinkies, there's 54 codes or 64 codes. And so all these codes are pointing. They're spherical. They're not linear. They're pointing to ways of being and templates that we embody and inhabit from our birth. So, so we're not talking about right and wrong. We're simply like taking a diamond and the way the light hits the diamond, just turning it ever so slightly to see a new way. And if you happen to be born during this period, then this is your life work. This is what you came in to do. This is where the sun shines. So it becomes like your brand. And I know a lot of people with this Jinky 61, uh, one of whom is in my family. So I get a chance to really observe the mind because this is in, the, in human design, this gate is found in the crown. So the crown can be this place of receiving divine inspiration. And it can also be the place of rigid thinking, I know everything. You know, one of the things that if you say to someone in this jinky or, or like, let's say all of us, because we have all the 64 codes in us, even if it's not our life work or it's not our, our tractor field or in our, <clears throat> in our emotional sequence, Someone tells you something, and what is the first thing that you say? I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, if you knew, you'd be doing it, right? So you don't know. There's a part of you that does not know. So in this particular shadow, you know, you're living in your mind. It's not embodied wisdom. It's you think you know, but you don't know. I mean, people who have been in addiction, right? Like if you try to explain to them, hey, you know, drinking even a little bit of alcohol is a slippery slope. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then what do they say? Like, I got this. Because in their minds, they understand the equation. They understand the calculation, but it hasn't filtered to in their embodiment. So it's, it's really fragmented. And I think that's one of the things that this jinky is pointing to, which is psychotic, 
not clinically psychotic, but insane that we are fragmented. You know, my brain guy used to have this machine. It was like freaking ninja machine, but he totally used it off label. Like it was for kind of biofeedback kind of thing, but more than that, it was energetic and he became kind of one with it. So he really could mine some data. Um, He could think like the machine and the machine would give him data and he would know what it meant for the person. And as one of his patients, I was constantly in awe of what he knew about me from this energetic imprint of this machine. So he would do funny experiments on this machine when you know, you're in his office and it's like the second or third hour being with him. And he's like, well, let's test that on the machine. And one of them was how far are your fragmented selves from each other? Interesting, isn't it? And it never is what you think. Like you might think, no, I'm totally integrated. And then he would find some place where I'm not. So he would say that if the machine came up with a number more than a hundred, you were really fragmented. Which, what does that mean? It means that a part of you is over here going, yeah, I know. And the other part of you over here is drinking the alcohol, you know, or doing the thing that you, yeah, I know about. It's not integrated. You're not acting as one. The parts are not speaking to each other. So you would be a candidate for parts work, which if you know me, you know, I love parts work. And that's what we've brought into the Evolving Sisters Network in the form of the trauma work that Claire Dash does in Transforming Trauma and in her uh, circle, healing circle. I love, love, love parts work because the more integrated we are, the more coherent we feel, the more at peace we feel the more on purpose we feel instead of like saboteurs over there or, you know, inner, inner victimized children over here that haven't been tended to and they get triggered and um, cause you to doubt your purpose or all the things that can happen when we're not integrated, when we don't see clearly. So Gene Key 61 is in psychosis isn't a clinical diagnosis. It's really a societal diagnosis. It's all of us. We're all crazy and insane. We have this pattern in us. It's delusional beliefs. I mean, one of the massive delusional beliefs is that we know, we know anything. We don't know because our brain filters out a large percentage of data I'm so curious, like someday I hope that when I cross over or have a ayahuasca journey or something, I get to see the information that I'm filtering out. I'm sure it would just like fry my circuits, but I would love to understand like, what's the universe that's being filtered out because our brains want things to be workable and organized for us and they're patterned. So whatever you were programmed with as a child, notice that you probably select the same kind of person as your parent. And in work like the Hoffman Institute, they talk about you either adopt your patterning from your past or you are in rebellion from your patterning. So either way, you're controlled by your patterning. And those patterns are are deep because they were set before your conscious mind could kick them out. Because between the ages of utero and seven years old, you didn't go, you know, mom, That is going to lead to a really bad pattern and I'm not going to do it. (laughs) You know, I wish we had that, right? I wish, and I think some kids coming online now actually literally say those things to their parents, but we didn't have that. We just, we were like sponges between that in utero and seven, we are sponges and we take everything in. And of course we have unconscious parents because we're all unconscious at some level. We all are on autopilot at some level. So we have delusional beliefs. And one of the beliefs is that this world as we see it is the world that exists and it is the way that it is. And we only see in part. And so having don't know mind saves us from the delusion. 
And I'm going to talk about the shadow even of don't know mind, because the, I'm not preaching one way. I'm not preaching a right way. I'm simply saying these are things to be aware of. Like it's a yoga inside yourself. And sometimes we swing so far over here where we think we know. And sometimes we swing so far over here where we can't own a thing and we don't know what what's what. You know, I remember I was with a partner before who was, who was very um, P on the um, Myers-Briggs. So if you know P, it's like they're, they're open-ended. And I would say something like, well, did you do that thing? And he would pause and I would, and he was also really slow paced, but super brilliant. And, <laughs> and I would like go do the laundry while I was waiting for the answer. And I'm like, what's so hard about the answer? It was like, did I do that? You know, and it was just like, no, I don't mean this as an existential question. Like literally, did you do it or not? <laughs> so in some ways we can really turn in on ourselves and get all messed up, but that's not what this gene key is saying. It's just saying like, you know, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Okay. Like hold everything lightly. Yes. Take a stand. Yes. Have beliefs even, but hold them lightly. And acknowledge all the time, as much as your ego wants to acknowledge I'm right, walk around acknowledging how wrong you are. <laughs> That's a great exercise. And I mean, I think it keeps us humble. It's more playful. And when someone wants to point out how wrong you are, then you've already basically given yourself that kind of exposure therapy where you're just like, yeah, could be. I mean, what is the most disarming thing to do when someone accuses you of something? Yeah, could be. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, what does someone say? They can't keep hammering it because you've already just Aikido moved them and got out of the way. And now they're just like, Phew. okay, cool. Well, do you want to go get some tea? Yeah. So Delusional thinking. Let's go back to delusional beliefs, the delusional belief that we think we know what reality is and truly we filter out most of reality. And we live in, it's like Facebook. We live in worlds that we created and then we think we didn't create them. So every click, every like, everything where you even stop to scroll, I mean, that's how this algorithm is trained, takes into account who you be, and then feeds it back to you as if it's reality, but it's not, it's, it's constructed and you created it. The good news is that's what happened. And we can, we can make choices out of it. So let's, um, let's presence that in the gene keys, the question of why is propelled. Now we've heard about what's your big, why that's not this. That's like you telling yourself an empowering story for your purpose. And again, we're not saying true or, or not true. We're just saying it's an empowering purpose. But this is the question like, why did this happen to me? Why is the world like this? Why? It's kind of got victim energy in it. And I remember, I think it was Ramana Maharshi when he's, and I, don't, I don't know if it was that him or Nisargadatta. One of them said, if you have to ask why, you really don't get it. That may be in Krishnamurti because he did kind of like to be in your face. But if you have to ask why, you don't get it. And I remember going through a period in my life where I was like, why? Because I really wanted to understand a justice. Is there justice here? <laughs> and I guess the answer is yes and no. Like it's like on a meta level, yes, it's all just. I just don't know how, you know, or my mind can't see the whole thing because really, you know, I heart Huckabee's one of my favorite films of all time with Dustin Hoffman and Lily Tomlin, they explain the nature of everything. So if you ever want a funny explanation of everything, they put like this sheet over your hands and they're like, these look like separate, like as they poke out, these look like separate individuals, but they're all one, right? Don't you get it? So there's the ultimate cosmic joke. We, will, we are all delusional because we think we're separate selves. And we retain our particularity even when we cross over. That's how we have um, connection with those who have crossed. 
And yet we also enter into oneness. So much of our mind cannot even comprehend the non-linearity paradoxical truth of the nature of reality. We can't. So that's okay. We're going to keep trying. And we also have to know we don't know. I was talking about this with our group um, in the Sisterhood Activation about science. So science and <laughs> I keep remembering like the Andrew Huberman podcast. Thank you for your interest in science. Well, and then you have like the Vatican. Thank you for your interest in religion. <laughs> Jinky 61 is like, yeah, that's where we go. We go into the right brain religion, the left brain. That's how the Gene Keys categorizes it. Science, because we don't like uncertainty. And so we need to know. We need to know we have to have something that we can put our faith in. And while both of them in moderation are really great, we still have to think for ourselves and we're going to be wrong. <laughs> Newsflash. And I was sharing the story about when radiation was discovered. I believe it was discovered by a couple because I remember this woman in, in whatever thing I was reading and she was radiating bread and eating it because they thought that radiation was good for you. And now of course we use radiation to kill cancer. So here's how wrong we can be even when we are in science and the holy grail of science or the holy grail of religion. And of course we've been in an era where we're breaking down those old structures so that we can, hmm, start to see beyond them, start to create something new that has never been created when we are not tied to this psychotic need for certainty. And we all have it. It's in our, it's in our like patterned um, way of being, patterned psyche of being a human. It's how we feel safe. So I think as spiritual people, we're just called to start feeling safe in a different way. Start feeling safe in something internal. And that leads you to your spiritual path. So let's move on the continuum and let's presence the city. So the city of sanctity is really the holy of holies. It's where we enter. You know, you may use that logic to get to the door, but you've got to get off that horse and walk through that door. And when you walk through that door, it's like, it's like being in a medicine journey or like doing DMT where you're just like completely blown open, blown out by the light of divinity and who you think you were, who you think you are, pfft, nothing. And so we enter into the Holy of Holies and we can do that here and now. And the physiology of this gene key is the pineal gland. And that's that doorway said to be that doorway into the Holy of Holies, into the God realm. And I love uh, Mark Gaffney, who's a Kabbalist, you know, just so proficient in, in Hebrew and the Torah and esoteric teachings, uh, said that the word for kind of this holy of holies is lifne. And the way he interprets it is being on the inside of the face of God. I love that so much. So there's no separation. We are inside the face of God. That's intimacy. That's really acknowledging our divinity. And that's what the gift frequency is the pathway to. So I'm going to read you the first line of Jinky 61 gift is inspiration. And it says, God is pressure. Well, there you go. Because the head and the root are the pressure centers in human design. And that pressure center gets us to seek because we want relief from the pressure. And the pressure up here is asking the questions. And the particular question of 61 is why? But it says, inspiration is what happens when you stop worshiping God and you start becoming God. So is that some megalo 
maniacal thing. <laughs> no, it is not about your ego self becoming God. It is about owning the power of who you be. And so instead of putting our power outside of ourselves through science and religion, and certainly those things are okay, they are not in and of themselves wrong. They're valuable in a lot of ways. They're structure. But it's to know yourself beyond that. And inspiration is the pressure that happens. And when you let go of that pressure, that's, that's the burst of creativity. And in Kundalini, we called that the had, had. It's H-A-R, but the tongue touches the roof of the mouth, had. So inspiration, he says, involves a powerful dismantling of the inner realities that you have built with your own mind. So when we're stuck knowing, yeah, I know, then, then we really shut ourselves off from all of the incredible things that we have to experience as God when we are a human content to know. And maybe you have to develop your nervous system to get there because honestly, this kind of stuff can blow you out if you don't feel grounded. So a lot of times, you know, when I approached yoga and Kundalini, like part of my work was like crying a lot and really shoring up my spine, getting it straight. Like I was walking like that, like hunched over, collapsed, guarding my heart. Oh, and now I can sit with a full spine. And what that means is when your spine is strong, your heart can be open because you've got something back in it. And so this pressure really leads to creativity if we give in, if we go the direction of, okay, now I'm going to develop a doctrine and a belief out of it. I'm going to become fanatical. I'm going to kill people for my belief even. Instead, we let go of that and like creativity comes through, like the spark of the divine comes through. And I love presencing it with pressure because we hate pressure. Like who likes pressure? I don't like pressure. Oh, but Richard Rudd says you are a pressure machine. Hmm. He says deep inside your body, the pressure of the mystery of your being beats at the heart of every single molecule living in your DNA. Hmm. And that's why this Jinky 61 is in the codon ring of Gaia because every single species has this pressure to evolve. And one day that atomic burst, whether it is at death or before when we have an enlightenment moment that alters the course of our world, we enter the Holy of Holies and we will never see the world the same again. You can't unsee when you see, when you really see. Now I know with medicine journeys, like they sometimes are so all over the place and show new things that really your structure can't hold it. So your memory filters it out. It's just out because it's not useful. Like, I don't even know where to put that. There's no scaffolding to put that anywhere. So I get it out. But when that sanctity occurs when that experience of yourself in the holy of holies occurs you will never be the same and that happens to people in near-death experiences that's why ndes you know go on to be spiritual teachers because they're like bringing a wisdom that's already here but but just saying look i had that experience i went into the holy of holies and I now know who I am and I now know what's possible and I'm connected to the imaginal realm, the realm that is non-linear, non-causal. And what a beautiful, incredibly uh, amazing place to be. And then we get to bring it into a body and live and live the polarity that our embodiment has for us like light and dark it's going to be a shitty day and it's going to be a good day it's going to be everything but my center core is locked in on the holy of holies that that inspires me um 
because I can feel that it's true. I can feel that my body knows this. He says, as you enter the field of the 61st city, a huge pregnant silence descends and all your mental activity ceases to exist. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Like the mind just stops because the mind itself lives in duality. And it's got an important role here for certain things, but not for your authority, not for your knowing. And so really silence is the province of the Holy of Holies. It's just awe. Have you ever had that experience where you enter into a place of awe and you are just There's nothing to say. Words like don't cut it. And even like you try to grasp, you know, oh, I want to hold on to this so I can share it with someone later. No, you're just like letting it go. It has to do with the breath. Breathing in the spirit of God. Ooh. Yeah. So generate, you can generate experiences of awe all the time. Find it a visual image. Like for me, it's the Northern Lights. For some people, it's kayaking on a lake and watching the ripple. For others, it could be a dolphin breaching in the ocean. You know, whatever it is for you, nurture that portal to the awe. Because then you would develop a relationship with something that's truer than what your eyes can see or what your brain, I mean, your eyes can see those things, but they don't see those things. They're happening right in front of us. Like a flower blooms right in front of us and we don't see it as awe because autopilot isn't trained for that. And so our job is to create a new possibility through new training. And that's what 61 invites us into. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I'll say that 61 is neither a place, the city, the Holy of Holies, nor a state. It's an inner experience of sanctity at being at one with the divine. And I, and I think this is also worth saying because some of you won't read the Gene Keys and don't need to read them, but it is worth saying. He says that the pressure that creates humanity's mass psychosis is no longer routed into the human brain. So I love that because pressure is routed into the brain and now it creates a question and I got to go solve it. And then I'm like myopic to solve it. And then I create a whole religion or, or something around that thing. I mean, we get that but the brain refuses it like er, gate up no and reroutes it through the solar plexus system which is so interesting and he says that's the newest uh, center of awareness the solar plexus it's the the energy center of our emotions and he says which it houses a far more advanced system of awareness and that's because it's newer so once the pressure of the awareness is removed from the brain, the question of why goes away. Interesting. And all other questions emerging from it, from such as how and who, they also go away. However, the pressure must go somewhere and it does. So this is a technology that he's describing and I'm sharing it with you because I think it's useful to contemplate. I'm not saying it's true. It's just a beautiful contemplation if we want to leave the old paradigm. Through this medium of a solar plexus center, it goes everywhere. So imagine that pressure that's refused by the brain. Now the solar plexus center sends it out everywhere. It is through the constantly vibrating wave frequencies emerging from the solar plexus that awareness is carried beyond the body into every corner of the universe. You immediately find yourself both completely empty and yet endlessly full. That's the word for luminous emptiness in the Buddhist tradition, the, the emptiness that's not actually empty, but there's no thing in there, no thing. 
So it's all a paradox. It's all a pointer. And this is the frequency of having that divine connection, that gnosis. I think there's one more thing to say about gnosis, and this relates well with this the shadow frequency. And that is that we are entering into a period where a lot of people are like, well, that just doesn't resonate with me. That doesn't work with my intuition. And I think we're babies at that. We are beginning to really understand what that means. But one of the things we get to do, and this is Saturn and Pisces is really saying, you know what, you got to grow yourself up spiritually because old spiritual ways of being are not going to work anymore. Like, like we got to grow up. And part of growing up is doing your shadow work and understanding truly your confirmation biases. Is it that it doesn't resonate with you because it challenges the crap out of you? <laughs> is it that it doesn't resonate with you because you would be wrong or because you would have to actually change? And if we're not having those kinds of conversations inside of us, then we are super subject to delusion. And then we rock around becoming like this closed circuit being just like Facebook, right? Like we only get news that we've clicked on before. And, and so it's just this closed universe. And we don't know that there's this universe out there and because we're rejecting it because we want the ease and familiarity and we want to be freaking right. And so we love our little universe. So part of like, I'm developing my intuition, I'm developing my resonance, is doing your shadow work to call yourself forward from some of the ways that your template plays the game. And really you can only do this with a teacher, honestly. You cannot do it on yourself because it would be like a fish trying to name water to themselves. Oh yeah, this is water and these are the properties. They don't know, but someone else can see clearly the games you're playing that you cannot see. We all have blind spots. I have blind spots. Everyone has blind spots. And if we don't have people around that show us and we're not open to listening, then we become delusional. And so part of doing our shadow work is to get the exposure therapy, as I referenced, to being wrong, to creating a reality, to being responsible for the reality you're creating, not making you wrong, bad, or shaming you or blaming you but as, a, as an access point to power, like if I really wanna be power, if I really wanna to touch the Holy of Holies, then I gotta separate out my conditioning. I gotta know what is like stuff I'm dragging in, like autopilot from my ancestral past, from my human collective. And, and, and it's not, a, you don't need to get rid of it because I don't know that we can, but you gotta see it. You gotta acknowledge it. That keeps the mind nimble and pliable so that this kind of gnosis, divine revelation, divine knowledge coming in is possible. And I don't think it shows up as belief systems. You know, so I remember hearing uh, Reggie Ray, he's a spiritual teacher and Archaya in the Buddhist tradition. A long time ago in Boulder, he said, the minute that he walked into a room where Trumpa Rinpoche was speaking at like probably Shambhala in Boulder, he's like, I knew he was my teacher because I understood the teachings, his entire teachings in like, like that, you know, in an instant, it was gnosis. And we're going to get more and more gnosis as we clean out our conditioning. And so if it translates into, yeah, now I'm going to form my own cult, you know, my own beliefs, that feels like more spiraling into the shadow. And then we get to check ourselves there because really that gnosis isn't for proclaiming a belief system for which others have to die if they don't believe. I mean, I've just been reading so much of the history of uh, in the Renaissance medieval times of the rise of Mary Magdalene and, and her the the teachings that followed in the Catholic church. So I'm now onto this like whole thing about what power does. 
when power thinks it knows, or it doesn't even care anymore if it's the truth, it goes into perpetuating its own power. So it has to kill off those that don't believe it. And we're done with that. There's no room for that in evolution. There, there's just no room. Uh, you know, we are in omni win win or omni lose lose. We're not in a win lose game because our weapons are too big. The, 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 the stakes are too high. So we get to be the ones that this gnosis doesn't turn into a belief that I get to enroll others in believing. We really want others to experience their God self, their, the trueness of their own nature. And so our gnosis is for us and for us to stay on the, the path of like the straight and narrow, the razor's edge path requires the cleaning out of old beliefs, of really getting clear where your conditioning has really set you up and how the reality that you're experiencing is a product of the patterning that you were born with that came through your ancestral lines. And that's the way that Gnosis gets to seep in, just like in the nooks and crannies, like the divine feminine, like she likes to do this, seeps into the nooks and crannies in order to change things. Like you create an opening by doing that. It's so beautiful. And so that's what we're here to do together. That's our, that's our elevated next step as the cycles change and the, and the nature of the game changes, meaning we're going into fire and air. So the quality of life will change what's possible is changing. Yeah, on so many levels. And we'll talk about that in future videos. Thank you for joining.